welcome friends here this is the video i am i am making this video for in particular to talk about a few points which i have discussed uh, during the discussion of stress strain diagram and i find uh, some of the questions arised during the discussion uh, after the discussion people have gone through the video and they have some questions regarding the stress strain diagram addition to that this is the video when i am talking about uh, all these points which i had uh, talked about the questions i would like to discuss at that but i could not able to make it and that i am going to discuss over here additionally uh, the questions which has been asked by the students i'll also try to explain those addition in addition i'll try to show some kind of other different materials or different kind of materials how they behave what is the only we have discussed in the stress strain diagram regarding the mild steel part or the kind of uh, i have only talked about uh, proof stress somewhere so some uh, basic informations if it is possible i'll try to show some kind of uh, it possible ne? i'll try my best to show all different kind uh, also possibly it may uh, help you to understand and in the last i have given a, a link regarding uh, so little bit more details about the stress strain diagram the concept uh, it is one of the link i am sharing you can see from everywhere anywhere it is available and the discussions also uh, list whatever the discussion i am going to here uh, i am i am going to put here put over here all this discussion also concerned to or in connection to the uh, what are the data is available uh, based on the informations available Yeah, they will help you to understand more in that now uh, in this it's, it's so that's why i name uh, this particular uh, lecture i name this is as uh, in particular i am uh, telling this uh, video or this class i have named as uh, you can see uh, it is explanation so all these kind of explanation which i want to talk about i am going to explain it uh, slowly and slowly first question i have asked during the discussion of the stress strain diagram or one question i it came to my mind every time and i used to talk about that with people and uh, slowly slowly i tried to find out some kind of uh, what is the explanation to that uh, like uh, we know Uh, if i apply a load then there will be a deformation and due to the application of load a, a, a equilibrium to equalize the material or to maintain the equilibrium a resistive force is going to develop if the resistive force is going to develop that resistive force on the body or the perpendicular plane it dip, it uh, some of the force uh, some reactive forces will generate and that is called the resistive force resistive force for perpendicular area will give you the stress data now if so due to the stress strain comes in the picture or due to the uh, strain stress comes to the picture it is uh, like uh, egg first or hen first likewise this discussion if so if we we consider in this way if the stress is um, uh, is the stress due to the stress strain comes in the picture then we must say uh, strain is a dependent parameter and stress is a depend independent parameter if the stress is independent parameter then it should be on x axis and strain is a dependent parameter it should be on y axis but whenever we go for the stress strain diagram we can see every time and everywhere or every every single situation we find uh, stress is on y axis and strain in on x axis and interestingly if you we'll go to uh, find out uh, this this kind of discussion there are various uh, um, a contradictory type of statement or some simple statement also you can find on the stress strain diagram so i gone through whatever the available uh, materials and based on my understanding i'll try to discuss about that point the first point i want to discuss that means uh, the stress strain diagram which we have already discussed during the discussion of um, stress strain this this diagram already we have discussed i no need to discuss again this stress strain diagram and we know uh, there are four different uh, state of stress or state of 
and there are four different zone a whole the structure starts from the zero loading to the fracture up to fracture there are four different state of stresses or four different uh, zones has been divided elastic region yielding strain hardening and necking most of the people again and this again uh, you must it has been taken from the this this figure has been taken from the rc hevler and as i said earlier also you please uh, see the rc hevler for the stress strain diagram if it is available with you it's a very good and you can see that book it it has been explained all different kind of material as well as the particularly the stress strain diagram i recommend people to see the rc hevler book it will give you the uh, clarity all this kind of clarification a individual simple clarification also it has been uh, it is a miniature clarifications has been discussed and different material also it is it is giving very complete idea about the stress strain diagram now just for the sake of uh, completion as i just now said the strain in you can see the strain in x axis and the stress is y axis but the load deformation graph whenever you see uh, the load deformation ca graph can be uh, represented other way also uh, that means uh, most of the time the load is in y axis and deformation in uh, x axis so that also a reason people may ask the due to the anyhow uh, the stress is fast or strain is fast there is no such question but when i am saying talking about the uh, load deformation graph load deformation graph you may get uh, in uh, um, reverse way also most most of the time uh, rather we will see the most of the time the load history or load deformation graph whenever we are getting we are getting load in y axis and deformation in x axis somebody may ask uh, why it is like that it should be in uh, other way yes it can be but uh, there are uh, some some rough ideas whatever i found uh, by studying uh, what is the material in the internet by searching surfing internet i find and then what are the explanation and what are the metallurgical people and some of the part uh, most of the uh, i i find most of the question on this region on strain hardening give some practical example of the strain hardening although i have tried my live classes i have tried to discuss about this but still i'll try to little bit more uh, um, not more physical or not more physical in example rather i'll i'll fix my aim to talk about how the strain in strain hardening is occurring because in a live class i could able to make it some some kind of changes but in a video sometime i could not able to match what are the questions are coming so that's why i tried my best to talk about in a graph only in form of graph not rather than to talk about more examples or uh, uh, although the examples have already been given i need not to explain more on that but i'll try to show in 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 form of a graph now uh, the stress as as i said is the load and deformation graph load deformation uh, if i am applying load as i know i am applying load and deformation is going to create if the deformation is going to create there is one theory or one story behind it people say in this way if the load also if i want to find out i am applying a load and i am getting the deformation like uh, how i am applying load i am getting deformation we all of us we know that uh, that whenever the stress is going to apply or stress is going to develop is stress and the applied load having two state two step of equilibrium condition what is the two step of equilibrium condition which we have discussed in my class lecture 1 lecture 2 i have already discussed that point again i am trying to focus on that then i'll come to that why this load deformation graph is coming in that i'll, I'll talk to, to speak about that now um else I, I i can also say in uh, first I, i'll come to the stress uh, later first of all i'll go to this this figure the early figure which talks about the load deformation graph why the load in y axis and stress in or sorry deformation in y axis because most of the time when i want to find out the load corresponding load we use the load cells uh, basically we use the load cells again the load cells uh, in terms of deformation it says and we convert into uh, back substitution the basic information we got in terms of deformation 
or in basic information of the material deformation occurs in terms of deformation since it is easily we can easily visualize the deformation and we convert from the deformation to if i know the change in length then i'll get the strain i'll get the i'll multiply the material young modulus then i'll get the stress and if i know the area original area i can get the uh, load as well so uh, correspondingly a uh, one back substitution also give you that so the load cells also works on the deformation control most of the uh, components which are utilized to obtain this data uh, deflection in, in in majority they are uh, deflection control or deformation control it is easy to control instead of load and that's why uh, it is also one concept one uh, um, uh, a, a few group people says for that only the deformation in y axis because initially we get all the all the inform information basic information we get fundamental information we get in form of uh, strain or in form of deformation so the strain or the stresses sorry the stress or the load is depending upon the deformation or stress is depending upon the strain if this is one of the one group says in this way in other way people also say in uh, like what just now i was trying to speak what the stress where the stress comes in stress and the externally applied load have two different uh, state of or two different steps to get the stress from the internally uh, externally applied load if i'll apply the external load then it will be equilibrium with the internal forces and moments if i'll apply uh, we we know any body we have taken any single body and we sliced it by a imaginary plane then the um, uh, force distribution comes out and out of this force distribution we take uh, all this component of the stresses in x and y then from there we get the stress action and all this so based on that if you'll see one if i'll apply the load immediately if i'll apply the load the body is going to distort or body with the volume is going to change whatever some kind there are two different part one is on hydrostatic type and another is uh, the hydrostatic type is uh, like tensile or direct stress type and other type is the uh, distortion type or the shear type this two component of the force create some deformation and uh, the force which is applied is equalizes or is is uh, um, uh, maintains the equilibrium due to the development of the internal forces now the development of the internal forces and uh, corresponding to their perpendicular direction will get stress so in order to apply if i'll directly apply load and i can i'll get the stress not not like that first of all it will introduces the strain or first of all it is introduces this is also one group people says in this way as well in terms of equilibrium one in terms of the deformation counter or measure in experiment one in terms of theoretical what it is uh, says all this and again some some says in this way also it is said the very obvious the strain must be more fundamental as i said it is ugl stress strain diagram so it is a strain that is taken into x axis that means it is independent variable the argument is little bit superfluous and to plot the stress strain diagram as i already discussed this is the reason that means whenever i am going for the load deformation curve or to find out the load it is difficult to for me to find out the load rather it is easy for me to find out the, the deformation one need only observe that constitutive law metals uh, is non linear that metal specimen experiences necking so that the drop graph engineering stress once point on the ultimate tensile strength is reached what does it mean one need only to observe the constitutive law that means sigma is equal to e into epsilon i talked about the constitutive relation the hooke's law also is one kind of that is the constitutive relation we are talking about which talks about the stress strain diagram or stress strain relationship uh, non linear uh, if the law of metal is the constitutive law of metal is non linear and metal specimen experiencing uh, experiences necking so that there is a drop in a graph in engineering stress once the point of ultimate tensile strength is reached then that means once the ultimate point uh, reached then it start dropping like uh, we know from our stress strain diagram our understanding or what we know earlier based on that we can say that when i'll draw the stress strain diagram so the stress strain diagram says that means after the yield point it will after the yield point it comes down then it goes up then it again at this point here from here to here this is a flat and northern there is no slope and then it uh, from this point onwards it drops down then this zone is talking about the necking this zone is talking about the uh, 
um, strain hardening this zone is talking about the yielding the first zone elastic zone this zone yielding zone this zone strain hardening zone and this zone is the necking zone so uh, in in such a situation taking the strain in x axis avoid the possibility having multivalent function this also says since if i am taking the stresses as the necking starts when the necking starts it is again it goes like uh, the true stress and curve we know after the yield point it goes from here to uh, if i start then it will goes from here the, or it will uh, asymptotically goes with the uh, ultimate stress it goes there that means when the necking starts uh, you forget about the uh, third curve if i uh, when it start on um, the necking when when the necking will start immediately after the necking uh, or before the sorry the point ultimate point reaches from there onwards the instantaneous the necking will start then the area will decrease if the area will decrease the p by a we are talking about the stress on uh, stress is indirectly proportional to the stress area as area decreases so uh, there is a um, the, the the drop of the due to the drop of area uh, there there is a discontinuity of the stress or you uh, you can say the stress singularity may occur or it may increase uh, highly it may increase it can you can see the exponentially it increases so a multivalued function to avoid that it is to maintain a single graph uh, um, uh, the stress has been taken as the independent graph Thus, the choice of take strain on x-axis is more of a simpler convenience. That is the one majority, and that happens to be in accord with the more fundamental reasoning discussed above. Now, the stress strain diagram we talked about, as I said, the stress strain diagram, particularly strain hardening. Before coming to the strain hardening, I'll come to the strain hardening. I just want to show some kind of because many people are now uh, some of the um, courses which is, those do not have any testing till yet although they are studying but they no, do not know how the this is basically a uh, categorically UTM machine has been shown again this this images have been shown from the um, as I said uh, Hebler book only so this is one kind of arrangement uh, some other machines will have some other thing uh, it is just a common kind of utm or universal testing machine as it says or it, it looks like so it will have this all that means uh, one 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 part is uh, loading and unloading part will be there and load unload and control will be in a separate unit and the specimen will be loaded in a separate unit these are uh, all every every single kind uh, machine you will go for uh, the high end machine to low end machine most of them I, either in in terms of size or they are main, mainly the capacity based the machines are based on or classified on the capacity based what kind of uh, loading capacity they have so it will be discussed when when you have your own material testing lab at that time you understand just to show you or to have a idea on that material sorry machines it has been shown so no more major thing in there now some of the people have asked about uh, like the doctoral material necking occurs to show that necking you if you see there are uh, various kind of fracture in the doctoral material also doctoral or brittle in the major classification of the material we are talked about when we are talking about the uh, particularly the elastic material and the testing point of view or the um, tensile test point of view the brittle material you can see the small brittle uh, if you say uh, so no uh, warning of that the directly it breaks and when it's the doctoral material doctoral material as a way if a very doctoral material will be there then this cop cone side you can say you can see easily a cop cone shape or one one shape is go inside another uh, one is one side will be cop type other type is uh, will give the cone type shape will create and this is a moderate doctoral where you will have some kind of um crack or sorry i, I must say is you can see a screwed uh, kind of if you see it's just looking like a uh, a screw passes through like this one the um, jigs uh, the, the fixture is going to hold similar kind of a shape is going to develop in both sides some place it is coming out the material will come out and, and in some side one side of that material the material will be there and other side that will make some um no material will be there so likewise a zigzag shape you can see similar kind of thing or 
what is ductile material i no need to explain again but still i am giving uh, given here is the ability of a material to withstand plastic deformation under tensile load and fracture occur after too much of long and we have discussed around 375 percent of elongation so 325 percentage of elongation has been done in the mild steel low, low carbon uh, steel and but the brittle material immediately after the uh, immediate after the personal uh, pro uh, this is called pl is the uh, proportional limit immediate after the proportional limit the fracture starts or fracture immediately fracture occurs now you can see the fracture on whatever i am showing or whatever i am discussing brittle versus ductile material has been shown and various time various various material may not as I, I also i have discussed most of the material or in majority of the material may not have a distinct yield point so those who are plastic material or brittle material they will directly from proportional limit or the elastic limit whatever you give name immediately after that brittle material failure occurs but here after yield point there is a lot of uh, load can be taken due to the strain handling and what is the strain handling we will come to that you need not worry and uh, this is the young's modulus we are talking about the slope within the elastic limit or proportional limit this ratio between the stress and strain ratio between the load and deformation will give you the, uh, the young's modulus of that the material characteristic of that and the area this this the total area which is uh, colored uh, shaded area is the energy expansion or energy has been absorbed by the material so ductile material we have seen the ductile material has a capability to absorb that much of energy or high amount of energy also people ask me question like a strong hard tough likewise here i have shown some uh, strong material tough material and ductile material I believe this uh, um, figure or image. Can you see? You can see that the amplitude based on the amplitude. Although I have discussed some live classes, I have uh, already I have discussed about the hard material. Hard is the property of the material of the scratching. It it cannot it, you cannot give whole material if it will uh, the whole material if it, you, 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 scratching means hardness can be tested by Brinell hardness, Rockwell hardness. We do and it's it's basically hardness is a compressive testing. In whatever we are talking about here, here we are talking about the um, all this material we are talking about um, elongation or ductility in form of tensile load. If the same material under the compressive load, then that is also called crushing, crushing of the material. But here, here the hardness is not talking about the crushing. Crushing is the compressive load and hardness is also compressive load. But the whole in a crushing the whole area might be under like in a tension the whole area under or the whole cross section is under the a tensile load and in crossing the whole cross section will be on the uh, um, uh, compressive load but hardness the, not the whole area a small area indenting area or the amount it can able to indent the um, uh, the ball any kind of ball or diamond ball or pin or something like that you have to indent you are trying to indent on that body it's scratching capacity or the it can able to take how much uh, material can be scratch or it can be impressed or some some uh, external material can be impressed on the secondary material is, is showing by the hardness of that or it represents the hardness and strong are not so uh, easy to uh, sorry uh, not like uh, synonyms to each other but one is talking about uh, the high energy hardness is talking about the compressive strength with indenting power Hardness of the hardness is a property which allows, or it is a, it is a virtue of that material which is not allowing the body to indent. You cannot indent much on that its surface. And whereas the strong talk about, uh, like if I'll give an example by the physical meaning, you can understand. Let's say if I'm talking about a tortoise shell, outer shell. By looking into that tortoise outer shell, outer shell, uh, it looking uh, tough and hard. Uh, and at the same time it is i should not say it is tough it is hard and strong those are like isotropic and homogeneous we say similarly the material can be strong and hard or strong and tough you can see this is the this is not strong but toughest but it is not you cannot say it is not strong it is not uh, soft i can show you some material which which this amplitude may not be very low and it is it may be ductile but it is soft in nature 
so strong tough based on the amplitude how much the amplitude initial within the elastic limit how it is uh, there's a small amount of the loading though although you are saying within the elastic limit how much the amplitude of the load it also creates what is the material strength of that it is, it, it is because the load bearing capacity how much the load it is able or capable to take that also talks about that as i said uh, tortoise outer shell is looking very tough hard at the same time if i talk about the fish scale if i want to break um, if i want to break the fish scale and i want to break uh, the tortoise shell from our basic understanding or from our uh, you can say um, um, our uh, sense whatever our, our common sense says by seeing this tortoise outer shell again it is comparative term because tortoise if i talk about the tortoise inside the tortoise shell or the snail inside the snail is they are uh, compared to their outer structure is soft in nature but the outer part by looking into that we can say it's a little bit strong or it is strong because I, if i want to break it i need to give you see uh, i need to give a huge amount of energy or higher amount of energy and it, again it's a compressive kind of load so hardness of uh, or the strongness strength of the material strength is load bearing capacity strong it can absorb the energy how much energy it is going to absorb before breaking that is nothing but the strong of a strong length or that is a strongest material we say it is again you all these cases all these shadow areas is nothing but the energy absorbing capacity total energy absorbed during the process if it is all these points are the end points are, are breaking point now in toughest case it is going little bit higher and in most ductile material this toughness is more high and that's why designers are very much interested to go for although it is uh, not very tough or uh, sorry not very strong but it is tough in uh, nature because the loads are not very high like this and in metal case but the loads can be for a very longer period of time it will have a higher life cycle or life is high so based on that as per our requirement we can decide like uh, if i am talking about uh, concrete concrete has a good uh, uh, compressive strength so and they are uh, hard in nature gray uh, gray cast iron or cast iron materials are good in um, uh, they are also brittle in nature and they are good in uh, vibration damping so the all this most of the machines are heavy machine their bases are made of cast iron because they can able to sustain that compressive loading so this is one kind or one example where from where you can uh, compare the same uh, it may be in a same material or um, uh, let's say if i'll draw uh, one figure it may give you some kind of more information let's say i am considering two different material and i am applying it is energy absorbing capacity or energy absorbed by the body if i'm saying or the area under the curve let's say if i am considering this is a rectangle and this area under this curve is like this and i am taking this as uh, a this part is a and this part is b now if i'll just rotate if i'll just rotate now and rotate means i am talking about i'll now i'll do in this form the same rectangle i am changing here you can see now it has been converted to b the width converted to b and in the both the cases the areas are same you can say uh, here the both the cases the areas are same but one will be called as a tough material and one will be called as a strong material although the areas are same you can see the areas are same because of this amplitude you we need we need higher amount of energy or higher amount of uh, um, input to break this material although this this two cases you can have with similar kind of uh, comparison a hard material and a strong material or a strong material and a tough material i think uh, this this kind of example if you think of then it will be clarify your doubts now some of the cases i i want to show you during the that class i could not able to show you these are the kind of steels are available they have the stress strain graph having different uh, elastic limit or you can see here up to the maximum spring steel spring steel is the most and there there is also this is not uh, high carbon steel 
or medium they are um, a, this is also called uh, some kind of high carbon steel because we one percent more than one percent we say high carbon steel uh, based on the spring steel as we say most of the springs or heavy duty springs particularly they normally utilized up to one percent carbon below that this is soft steel structural steel machine steel as per our requirement as per our uh, name or sorry as per our application we can say these are the stress strain diagram for that here one case I talked about those material do not have a distinct yield point. They are it is it is a process. It's shown by the aluminium case. This is I I, to, I talked about offset method. Here this offset it has been taken the offset. That means from the zero to zero uh, zero point two percent zero point zero zero two the strain amount we draw a perpendicular line along parallel to draw a line parallel to the its original line wherever it touches will just take the corresponding uh, value on the stress axis will give you the yield stress wherever there is a mat the material which do not shows although they are ductile but do don't so uh, does not have distinct yield point then those materials uh, to find out their yield strength we normally follow the offset method and what is it here it is for uh, like copper molybdenum all these materials are there they they are although they are under uh, only in the low carbon steel you can have a distinct yield point most of the other ductile material you may not have distinct yield point but to you, you can able to calculate for this calculation we do uh, the offset method what is offset method now offset method is the process by which we take uh, to 0 0.2 percent of the on, on strain axis we take 0 0.2 percent of the strain we draw a parallel line um, along the or uh, in the direction of or in the similar fashion as it is the original stress strain graph and wherever it will touch the graph then that uh, that and the corresponding uh, stress value on that point when this line touches the original graph if i take the point corresponding stress value will give me the yield stress now similarly uh, natural rubber you can see I, I although i told that stress strain diagram within the elastic limit if the material those shows linear in nature they are conventional material here it is not a conventional material natural rubber you can see the, within the stress strain uh, or proportional limit or elastic limit whichever you will tell all this they are not linear in nature as the load increases the deformation may not follow that uh, what what do we mean by linear if i apply 5 kN 5 mm deformation is up occurring if i am applying the 5 kN to 10 so it should be 10 the deformation should be 10 if i am increasing 15 it should be 15 likewise it should be linearly the deformation corresponding to the increment of the load they must behave linearly if it's so original also the common material may not uh, go in that form but it is not very much different but in most of the unconventional materials like natural rubber, uh, polymers, some are other materials, carbon, carbon fiber, they may not follow exact line or uh, carbon fiber may be following uh, exactly not a smooth curve. They are following like this hexa type of curve you can see within the elastic limit if you will just stretch it instead of a straight line you will have hexa type of uh, kind that is called material nonity as well. Because the again, as I say, uh, as I said, the when the stress is not proportional and directly proportional to the strain within the elastic limit, those materials are called material nonlinear nature or nonlinear materials. They don't they doesn't they don't follow any uh, linear relationship between the stress and strain. Here, one case of grey cast iron has been shown, which has a higher strength of uh, this strength. As I said, um, uh, compressive strength is higher. And one is the uh, typical concrete mix. Uh, you can see the concrete has a higher value of sigma C max is higher. If I'll compare it, uh, so the most, so that's why the foundations of any structure, the foundations are made up of concrete. Then we can say after the foundation, we use uh, only only steel rods can be used outward, but the foundations are good for uh, this steel. I'm sorry, concrete is good enough in that. Now. Uh, one one case the uh, as i said uh, many time we have discussed the energy stored the within the elastic limit or up to proportional limit the energy which is stored uh, within this is called the modulus of resilience however up to the uh, breaking from the starting up to the breaking the um, whatever the energy stored in the material it is called modulus of toughness 
so before uh, discussing all this i have already shown some more cases of like as i said earlier it may be ductile you can see a plastic material very small elastic region and then you can have it's similar kind of like ductility you have a because the permanent elongation is going on a ductile material which we have already discussed a strong material and a brittle material this material also called as strong because there is little strain a high stress and uh, they are also called as these are like uh, plastic deformation glass is brittle like that they have a high sudden uh, sudden impact or impact loading uh, capacities are high as I told about the uh, tortoise shell and fish scale from there, you can say if I want to break, I need a higher energy, a higher amount of energy for the tortoise shell. But I, if I, in the same amount of energy, if I want to break the fish scale, I may not able to break it. But I, in a smaller load of energy and if I repeatedly try to uh, break that, you, you can easily break it. Or you can say in this form, let's say if I will give you this pain, I will ask you to break what you will do normally it is comes to our mind i will start uh, if, if somebody says me break break this so i start bending not to uh, stretch so because i know easily i can break in this form rather than this way so because the uh, material can able to sustain the load along their fiber length but they are little bit loose in that so that's why the we can also find out the load along the uh, material line or perpendicular to the material line. In that way only, these are the basic concepts. Uh, we know whatever uh, nobody knows in our uh, every every single uh, when we are child, we used to break broomsticks. We do not have any idea about the material line, but it comes to our basic sense. If I am having a broomstick, every time I break the stick by using bending, not by stretching. Because how it comes? Because it's already it is in our mind or it comes by some way we saw that uh, in our household people are doing so so we groomed by this way by seeing that so we do in that form so in that you need not to have very much high knowledge about this material and material testing and material breaking like that but still it is uh, uh, it is a common sense comes so engineering moreover common sense and we are doing this common sense kind of things it has to be think of all these problems now here also I saw, I saw a one case of strong material, brittle material and uh, strong and tough, strong and brittle and weak and ductile. These are the one cases from where you can also define some. Now comes uh, the point comes is strain hardening. Many people have asked about strain hardening. Meaning of strain hardening is a self explanatory strain. It means that material becomes hard and strong once it's strained. Once I am straining the material, it is going to, you, you need become a little bit higher, no, uh, uh, if I go very technical point, so people need to have little bit of knowledge on the material testing or material, uh, it is called uh, molecular material like that, we need some kind of understanding or molecular level how it happens, we need to have some, some kind of knowledge. Now. Uh, See the stress strain curve, if I'll show you, it goes when it unload, I, I, I told you earlier, if I'll, after the elastic zone, if I'll unload it, it comes to down, then it, uh, the downward, then upward, and you see the value of the yield point, whatever earlier I have, now it has been increased. So the same thing has been written over here, it can be see that body is loaded from O, beyond the, loaded from O, beyond its yield limit. Uh, and thus deformed physically, plastically, and after that the material is unloaded. So while unloading the material will follow uh, a path parallel to previous straight line representing the elastic limit A to B. Now the same slope is written, line implies the elastic modulus of material does not change after the material deformed plastically. Although uh, after unloading the figure indicates the permanent strain equal to this is the permanent amount of the strain will be there. Uh, thus reinforcing the fact that a material never comes to its original size and say once deformed beyond yield point and once it reloaded the material form point B the material form point B easily this is the point B easily observe that the material elastic line has now changed and the length lengthened as compared to the previous as lengthened you can see it has been lengthened um, here whatever the yield point it has been uh, if you take this is and this is this is the case or here from here if you see it has been lengthened uh, as compared to the previous but keeping 
the same slope it is not changing the slope the slave slope you will see the slope whatever we have here the same slope you may have or nearly about the same slope you have here so there are yield limit now becomes bc which is the higher than the previous yield limit apparently it strength the material on straining this is the strain hardening experienced by metallic material by saying this much if you want to see you can see uh, one uh, i have given a link some more idea about the strain hardening uh, stress strain relation i believe i could able to make you understand uh, what are the questions are coming in your mind during the stress strain diagram and thank you